Okay, welcome to an introduction to an MAB, known as a MAB, or Media Access Bureau for the Northern Net Network. Um, the system itself is split into two key areas. Uh, the first ones would be the actual hardware that goes to make up all the components found in each MAB. The large rack to my left here contains most of the key equipment that each of the individual users will need access to. So just to walk you through the equipment, at the very top here we actually have a MDU, Mains Distribution Unit, going down then to a black and burst generator, uh, then down here to an actual video router. Obviously this enables us to route video between the actual uh, ingest stations and each of the uh, acquisition materials or devices on the system. This is the actual user's interface to the router as well. This enables the user to say, well, I want to use the AVID or the FCP or even the VTR decks as source or destinations, very simple to use. These here are just basic patch panels, again, enabling people to change uh, uh, the deck control or more importantly, have acquisition to file-based acquisition formats as well. Below this are then the actual decks that allow users access to the uh, tape formats and also the file-based formats. These are P2 and XD CAM for file-based acquisition. And then we have a 1500 deck which enables us to use either HDV, mini DV or DV CAM footage. And underneath here we have a Sony J3 which enables us to use any of the traditional uh, DigiBeta, Beta SP formats, but again in standard definition, not necessarily in high definition as the two or three units above offer. We now get onto the actual edit suites themselves. This is the Nitrous DX, which is the I.O. box that actually goes in tandem with the PC system here. This one's Media Composer software. And to the side of this is then the FCP system, which is based on a Mac Pro. And this actually runs a Kona LHE card for capturing. Each MAB also has a acoustic rack. This contains the centralized storage unit and any streaming coding device. So that's all the MAB hardware out of the way. Let's start to look into the interface for the edit stations here at the Northern Net Network. This is the PC system that runs Media Composer uh, running on the Nitrous DX hardware. First thing to note here is the fact that we do offer secure central storage, which the user themselves receives instructions through one of their emails when they make the booking to actually map a thing called a Unity drive. Um, we actually are warned here that the actual internal drives themselves will be wiped when you've used them. It does actually warn you, so you can just hit the dismiss button. Once you've gone through that process, we just need to map the Unity drives. I'm just going to go through the process of mapping them. So I begin the appropriate username and password. I'm going to select the volumes I want to use, or I've been nominated. Okay, and once we get the green icon in the bottom right hand corner, we now know we can actually launch the Media Composer application. Once the system's loaded, we obviously create ourselves a project, choose the project itself. Now in this case, it's just a standard definition project that I'm going to be using as I'm going to be capturing from Mini DV. But it can be high definition or it can be standard definition. Obviously, in order to require a signal from either the decks that are available to us, we need to obviously uh, manipulate the router, tell the router which source we're coming from, as well as also changing the actual deck control device as well. So in this particular case, I'm using the AVID, so I've got the red cable here, which currently needs to be changed from guest VTR to the HDV deck, or the 1500 it's also known as. And as well as that, I need to make sure that the um, AVID input actually has the HPR 1500 is also selected as a source. So once we place the tape into the system, what we're going to do now is we're just going to um, capture uh, the footage in that we want to actually send across the Northern Net Network. So I'm just going to go into the capture tool. I'm just going to capture that onto, in this case, the Unity drive. Record this in. The footage I'm now recording is what I'm actually interested in actually sending to a remote site such as a MAB or even an end user on the internet.
once we're happy with the material we've actually cut, which in this case is just a little shot, we just want to send the material that we're interested in. Uh, I'm actually just going to load it uh, in as a source clip. I can, in this case here, I can actually make editorial decisions, or more importantly, I can just choose the material that I want to send across the Northern Net Network. So in this case here, I'm just going to wait until we cut away from this shot. I'm going to mark it in. I'm going to wait until we get to the end of this shot of the guys walking before we get there. Mark it out. Just a rough kind of cut. Make that as a sequence. I'm going to call this one Send to Map. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this particular sequence and now I'm going to export it. Currently, obviously, it's held in a digital format, but if I want to make it more user-friendly, maybe send it as a QuickTime move, as an AVI, I can do a number of things. I can either export it directly from the edit suite itself, or we can submit it to a thing called an AnyStream server. The AnyStream server itself will actually do the remote encoding for us if we want it to. In this case, I'm quite happy just to export it, potentially, as a QuickTime movie. So I'm just going through the process of exporting, which is a right-click, and I say export. I'm going to choose the right formats through the options here. Again, we can choose any format that we want to. So in this case, I'm just going to choose QuickTime Movie. I'm just going to say, let's use traditional codec, such as animation, which would be fine. I'm going to save that. I'm just going to stick it onto my desktop. Once the system has finished the export process, the next thing to do is actually to submit it to the Aspira server, which actually sits in a central location, but actually manages how the data is moved across the network. Okay. So I'm now going to just quit out of the Avid application. Again, this will be almost an identical process if you were to use the FCP system as well. OK, now I've got my, uh, in this case, a QuickTime move that I want to actually send to my end user. All I need to do is actually submit this to the uh, Aspira server, which is at the heart of the Northern Net network. In order to do that, it's just a simple question of launching uh, a web browser, in this case uh, on the PC, very straightforward. The home page will actually direct us towards the Fastbex server, which is the Aspira server, which actually accelerates the delivery of the file from myself to the end user. So, all I need to do is log on with the appropriate username and password. So in this case here, it's one of the appropriate map sites. And once I've logged on here, what you'll then find is it'll be a uh, submit page. All I need to do is type in an email address. Find the file that I want to submit. And then just hit the send button. Once we'll now find is that this particular interface shows us the data transfer. And if you can see here, we're actually getting a very high data rate, which is again at the heart of the northern net, so again 100 megabits per second as a sustained data rate. So we can move round about a gig of data in just over a minute's time. So once the end user receives their email, they'll get a link to the actual download site. Once they click on the link, they'll actually be able to download the package that's been sent to them. And as you can see here, we're getting a much accelerated connection using the Aspira server which sits at the heart of the Northern Net Network. So that's a 165 meg file, let's just come down there.